In this video we're going to look at reading data into R. We have a number of data files that we're going to work with here. So this is just a text editor. The data we have here are plankton surveys. And we have the data in a number of different formats. In this first one we have a comma separated file. So we have the data items separated by commas. We have a header row, so we have headings at the top. Second format, we have comma separated values but no headings. Third, we have space separated values, so we just have spaces between the different items. Again with a header row. On this fourth one, we have space separated values again, no header row. And if we scroll across, we can see that this particular data file is quite large. So the fifth one is just a chopped down version that we can work with on screen. So on this one, we have um, CSV file, comma separated values with a header row. Here I've opened up a script and resized the windows to tidy up the screen. First thing we'll do is um, set the working directory. This is very important when we're trying to read files in so that we're, we're actually looking in the right place for the files. First of all we'll look at the read table command. So this assumes that the data items are separated by spaces and there's no header row. So that's what it will assume unless we tell it differently. So we're going to read in a data file, uh, data underscore no head dot text. Text file separated by spaces, no header. So exactly what the um, read dot table command is expecting. And we're going to read that into an object called data dot one. And the head command just gives us the top few rows of that data object. So we've displayed the top six rows of the data, of the data.1 object. Uh, but because there's so many columns, it's spread over a number of different rows. Now although read.table expects the data to be separated by spaces, we can use it to read in a data file that has commas separating the items, provided we tell it about it so it knows what to expect. So we use the sep argument. So we have read.table, open brackets, the name of the data file in quotes as normal. And then the second argument to that particular um, function is the sep. In other words, what is the data separated by? So we've read this data file into an object data.1.csv and as we did before we can use the head command to see the top few rows. That does work but the downside is that we can't really tell what each column contains. There are ways of renaming the columns but with 144 columns in this particular data set that's probably something that we don't want to do. So this time we're going to read in another data file. This time it does have a header row. And we're going to read it into the object called data.2. We're using the read.table um, function, which doesn't expect a header. So again, we have to tell it what to expect. So this time we give it the header argument. Header equals t, t for true. Now we could modify this to uh, read in the CSV file. Again, we'd add in the sep argument, sep equals quotes, comma quotes, so that the uh, function knows what to expect. But generally it's easier to use another function called the read.csv function. So we're going to take a data file that doesn't have a header, but is separated by commas, and read it into this data frame called data.1.csv. If we then have a look at the data that's been read in, 
we find that it hasn't really worked. It's taken the first row of the file as a header row, even though it wasn't. So there's two solutions. We could either um, add in a header equals f, header false argument to that particular command, which still leaves us with the problem that we can't really tell what each column is. Or more usefully, get our data in a format that includes a header row. So this time we've read the data into an object called data.2.csv. So the read.table function expects the data separated by spaces and doesn't expect a header. Read.csv expects the data separated by commas and does expect a header. So it's a case of matching the data file that we have to the function that we want to use to read it in and the arguments that that function needs in order to read it in in the correct format that we can work with. So we'll read in a smaller data set. We're going to read this into data.3 and then we'll take a closer look at it. So we can use the head command to get the top six rows. But we can also dictate how many rows we want by adding a second argument to the function. So we have head, brackets, the object that we want to look at, and then comma, and the number of rows that we want to look at. So we could have just the top two, or the top 12, depending on what we need. We can also do the same thing to the bottom of the file by using the tail command. By default, it gives us the bottom six rows. And again, we can modify that if we need to as well. And we can get some additional information on, the, on that particular um, data object by using the str command. So it tells me I've got 50 observations of 11 variables. It shows me what the variables are. It shows me what uh, type they are, so they're all numeric, and it gives me some of the values from them as well. One final way that we can get data in is by typing it in directly using the scan function. So here I'm going to take uh, input from the keyboard directly and enter it into a data object called measurements. Prompt changes, it has a number, it's waiting for, for me to type. Just click in there first. So I've typed in some values, I've pressed enter. It hasn't finished yet. If you have a look at the prompt there, it's got the number six. It's expecting the sixth value. I don't have my little uh, greater than sign yet. So I'll add in two more values, press enter. And then to finish the scan function and get back to normal operations, I press the enter key again. And it tells me it's read seven items into that particular data object. So in summary, we've seen how to read data files into data tables. And the key to success is matching the function that we want to use to the data format that we have. And we've seen how to enter data values directly from the keyboard into a named data object using the scan function.